Amazing. All right. Okay, so today we are going to talk a little bit about trading view, uh, charting, and all of that good stuff. Thanks for joining me, Wendy, in the call. Uh, welcome, welcome. So what I like to use is a, uh, a tool called TradingView. You can use just the web version, uh, tradingview.com, or you can download the app. Uh, I have a Windows PC, so I've downloaded the app. It looks a little bit nicer, uh, I find. So uh, what is TradingView? Good question, good question. So this is what it looks like. I've made it slightly smaller so it'll look good on the recording. Uh, so it is a tool to trade. So it's a, a, a view of your, of your trades. So before you go into the markets and start making uh, trades, uh, meaning you, you put in a buy or put in a sell, if you're doing uh, shorts and longs, crypto stocks, or if you're doing, don't worry if these terms don't make any sense right now, uh, or even if you're going to buy and hold, uh, so that's uh, hold on for dear life, huddle, huddling in the crypto world, uh, you can use these charts. You don't have to. Some people just say, oh, look, it's under 30,000 for Bitcoin. I'm going to buy. Um, they don't use these charts. Whereas if you actually look at the charts, it can tell you um, what's happening in the market, especially from your uh, one week view when you zoom out, that gives you a much bigger picture of what's happening. Uh, there's no point really looking at the one hour or the 15 minutes um, unless you're doing quick trades. If you're looking for the long term, you want to pull back and look at the big view. And that's where this comes in handy, especially Bitcoin and Ethereum. They've been around for a long time. So you can see what's going on. Uh, I'm pointing here because that's my screen. Uh, so I like to use uh, a technique that was taught to me by my mentor using Fibonacci. So I've got a little favorites bar here. Um, but before I get into all of this stuff um, and how to create favorites and all that sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, any questions so far? Like um, I see a lot of traders that would like to draw like this is the target price that they say oh if it drops this is the price that uh, this is should buy or and if it goes this price target that we should start selling it how can I tell like when it, this is the right time to start selling or buying because all I can and how is it you can tell like oh it tells the story because it seems to me that this is just telling me the history of the price action at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, the, the the charts like to repeat themselves. There's very similar patterns. Uh, okay. It's like what not. Sort of Sorry, what's that? What sort of patterns? Um, so okay. So I, when I say patterns, I, I don't. There's also something called. Um, uh, patterns like a, a bat pattern or a double top, all this sort of things in trading. We're not going to go into that today. Okay. Uh, we're going to be even more simple. So the patterns I mean is it looks the same, like a, a mountain. Um, so this uh, small peak here yeah. and this uh, small and uh, larger peak up here, uh, that is this and this. So these two peaks you could say, hey, it kind of looks a little bit like this peak and this peak to an extent, right? So you, you'll you look at the news that happened here in the in June uh, 2017, and then you'll look at the news that happened here in May 21. So uh, there's lots of different methods of doing this, but you can even um, go in deeper. Uh, and, and copy, there's a tool you can use to copy this exact section of the chart, and then mm -hmm. you can move it along and see if it lines up uh, to another section of the chart as you zoom in over here. So that's what I mean by patterns. And uh, that's what I mean when people say, this is what this is what I believe will be your time to start selling. But it's it's not a guarantee. All of these uh, analysts and, and chart specialists, they're still looking at 
uh, history and exact what's happening right now, nobody really knows. Anything could happen. So it's just an an educated guess, really, as to what's going to happen. But there are some very, very, very accurate people out there, um, and they can make they can earn a lot of money through their knowledge and studying the past. So the more you look left, they always say look left, and then trade. So you don't just take a trade based on this blue line here and these two uh, mm. green lines that I've put here. You don't just look at that and go, "Hey, I'm gonna do this." So only invest what you can afford. Number one. Number two is learn how to do your Fibonacci. Um, the Fibonacci looks at the the past, which is the emotional levels of trading. And then we can look at uh, buying and sell zones. So 786, 886 is a very strong emotional zone. Um, Fibonacci is life. Uh, people that have been studying uh, human, uh, human um, emotions. Yeah. Okay, um, just 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 dialing that a bit, all right? How do you explain the Fibonacci? Does that goes by emotion? Like just looking at these charts alone is all I see is just figures. So how can I tell, uh, just based on like emotion level? Like, do you mean looking at the market emotion or just based on my own emotion? Um, so basically, you will look at the the market or this chart here, for example, huh? uh, on the one week. So this is the the one week chart, and then you will. <laughs> start to get this uh, tool, Fibonacci tool. So it's over here on the left-hand side yep. and it's the Fib retracement. So there's a shortcut Alt-F or you hit this star icon and it adds it to your favorite bar. It's the first one I've added on my favorites bar and then you can move your favorites bar around anywhere you like. Okay. All right. <laughs> so uh, click on this tool and then you pick a, a, a zone that you think is where the market started to go up. For example, if, we, if we're going for an uptrend, then we'll just pick a, an area where the market started to go up. So we'll say about here, yeah. we don't want to go right down to the bottom because the big movement started here. So for me, I found in my trading, I'll go from roughly this area here, not roughly, but we'll start from here and then I'll go to our top. And when I say top, we're going to the top of the um the highest candle and then the 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 wick of that candle so over here i would say the red uh line here is the top so that's where i put that there so this is the top of that here and down here we'll just go to the the low the wick of the lowest candle there so that okay. looks good. So this is where I would start to draw some of my zones. And we can see that, you know, time was spent in these certain areas. So, for example, um, I then draw a horizontal line at the 786886. Those are the emotional zones that I like to use. Um, and that's what my my mentor taught me. Why these zones? They're the strongest zones. You can also work with this green and yellow line, the 50% and the 618 zones. So I'll box it up and then I'll teach uh, how to get these boxes. So it's an uptrend. So I like to use a green box for this one. Mm -hmm. and I'll also like to group everything together. So we go into the uh, object tree. And we can group everything all together. Ah, they've moved everything around. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so this is the object tree here on the right hand side. And I've got my rectangles, fib retracement. You can group them all together. This is a another class in itself, really. Um, but here we go, fib retracement. And we can create a group of drawings here. Right click, create a group of drawings. And I can rename this group. And I can say it's a one week uptrend. And what it's easy now for me to hide those two drawings that I just did. 
so the chart looks less messy yeah um and you can then individually uh bring them on the rectangle only and you can also lock it so it all comes in and all off together and then you can start labeling it as well so i can go into this box and it comes up with another little toolbar up here in the settings i can then label this as the one week uptrend change the color visibility it goes in the middle there yeah cool so it's now becoming nice and easy to read <laughs> excuse me and it's easy to hide it so when you are looking at uh, a one hour and you don't want to see it anymore it just becomes a lot easier so we'll bring this back so now we can see that in this zone here, it passed right through this zone. It spent a little bit of time here. Even here, you can see if we if we extend this, um, uh, this one. Oh yeah, I've locked it. Unlock, otherwise you can't move it. And then you can see this zone was an important area. So I've actually drawn a, a good zone. So this would have been a good area to know, okay, the market is going to come up and down around this 2000 area for Ethereum mm -hmm. and it come back up again, come back into the zone, fallen back below it, touch the zone again. So it's a really, really important zone. Um, so around this uh, area here, uh, between the 618 and the 50%, the market has spent a bit of time, then completely gone flying past it. You can see these big blue wicks here. It's wicked into the middle of the zone, gone flying back up again to 3,500, come back down. Now it's just disregarded this zone. So you know, right, it's going to go to another level. What level did it go to? Interesting. It's actually come down to this level here. It's gone to the 786. And the 886 zones. That, and that's that's your strong uh, zone. And you can use the arrow keys to further refine that and bring that lower. So it's exactly on the 886 zone. You can see it's 800 and, uh, 818, uh, 818 US dollars. So mm -hmm. you can label this one again. You can go into the settings. You can even set up a uh, uh, like a not a theme, what is it called? A stamp. So you can just go and set the template and you can say daily up, weekly, and that'll set the color and the text for you. So we can say one week uptrend. Okay. And then also here is the one week uptrend. Okay. So now it's nice and easy to see. And we can drag this into our other group and then we can hide it nice and easy chart looks nice and clean bring it back in easy to tell what's happening there's a little bit of labeling going on awesome so what's happened here we've come right into the zone so we could have easily predicted this at the top right to an extent mm -hmm. we don't know how long it's going to spend here but it's definitely come into our one week, um, our weekly. Uh, like a zone. Buying, buying zone, is it? Correct. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. So that's our buying zone. Uh, I know it's 8.30 now and you want to get ready and, and head off. So we can do a part two of this. But can you see how it's just so simple? Yeah. To just do one quick Fibonacci. And this is what I taught Rosh as well. Just a quick 20 minute session. And I haven't even gone through downtrends. So it's, you can, you can draw a Fibonacci and be like, oh, it's not lining up to any zones. Okay. Maybe I've picked the wrong start point and the wrong end point. So then you go and look and refine it, hide this one, start a new one. You know, you come in here, hide this one. Okay. Let's draw a new one. Let's draw a new Fibonacci. Maybe we'll start from here instead. And then you'll get more accurate with your zones. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, great.
way of start teaching me how to use all the basic tools for trading view. Yeah. Uh, because I've actually always wanted to try this out. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but uh like I have no idea like how to draw or where to look. That's the biggest problem. So that's why I've always been looking at just being a long-term hodler. <laughs> okay. But yes. it would be good to like, yeah, if I know this a bit of this knowledge, I can take advantage of the market just to buy and sell to have a building cup. Now, I think the next section I too would like to cover, right, is actually looking at the candles itself. So I understand like the, I have a basic understanding that the red candles, it's the selling point, And then mm -hmm. the blue ones, it's the, uh, is going up. It's a price that has gone up. Okay. Yep. Yep. So red is the one that's crashing and blue ones are the ones that are pushing the price up. Okay. Yep. But um, I also want to know like, what is the difference? Like you have those thick kind of candles and then you have those thin ones what does that represent and how do we know determined like uh why is it this way like when it stops at this thin line another one that's thick line that i want to know okay yeah for sure yeah all right I'll... cool cool um and is trading view is it free for me to use or do yes. i need to pay it's completely free. You get a little ad. So I have paid for mine. I got a Black Friday sale around this time of year. Oh, okay. um, so you get a nice discount. Um, if you go for like six months or a year, they give you a bigger discount. And then I just renew it again on, on the Black Friday sales the next year. Um, yep. it, you don't really need it. What it gives you is it gives you more alerts. Yep. So that you can instead of one alert, I think you get four or 10 or something like that which is nice because you can log into your phone and it'll alert you saying, Hey, the price is here. Go and look at your thing. Maybe you want to look at buying some, or maybe you want to look at selling some. Okay. Um, so that can be handy. Um, otherwise it's completely free. Rosh has been using the free version for over two years since I taught him how to do this. Okay. So use the free version, add, add comes up, click X done. Free is okay. good. Okay. Yeah. Just create awesome. an account. Otherwise it forgets your settings. And every time you go in and you draw a Fibonacci, you've got to go back in and then go to settings and then change the, the Fibonacci um, to your settings. And I, yeah. I will go through what the settings are that I use. The default settings I don't like. There's just way too many lines and colors and it's messy. Um, yeah. So I'll go through that as well. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Uh, awesome. So I'll catch up to you next week. Okay. Same time. Sounds good. Sounds good. Cool. Yeah, I have a busy little weekend. All right, thanks, Hans. <laughs> no worries. Thanks, Wendy. Fantastic. Welcome back for part two. We can always cut the part two part out if we're not going to keep uh, <laughs> keep that in. It could be like one of those videos where you've got the bloopers in the real thing. So. <laughs> Yep. Uh, welcome back, Wendy. Thank you for uh, doing this with me. So today we're going to talk about, uh, as we discussed uh, last week, we're going to talk about the candles, uh, the wicks, uh, or the or the thickness of yep. the candles, and what does it all mean. So uh, I've been looking at this one here. I'll share my screen and. There we go. So you can see here, massive wicks right here. So what, what does that mean? That means during this time period, uh, we're looking at the alluvium chart. Uh, you can see during this time period, the wick meaning that the candle went up very quickly to this high point, 180, uh, sorry, 1,803. And it immediately came down. It didn't close uh, at that height. What Whereas, do you mean like it didn't close? Because if it does went back, is if it does went up at that, but then it comes down. So what do you mean by close? Okay. So at the time frame we're in, we're in the one week time frame here. Okay. So, uh, in one week, what happened to the price? So if I go back 
and try and replay back to here. Uh, let's see how we go there. And I say uh, play here. OK, see what's happening? It's it's going very quickly. Um, can I go uh, 0 0.3? Let's try this. So uh, 0 0.5. So this is what's happening. Can you see? It's it's wicked. Did you just see what happened there? It, yeah. The price quickly went down. So during that one week, during the seven days, the price went and it, it quickly went down to 960 and then it came straight back up to 1080. So it, it didn't stay down there for that week. So we'll, we'll continue. Watch this, right? So we're watching the weeks go by. It's It's gone up and then it's come back down. I'll move my toolbar out of the way. It's gone up and it's come back down. So it, it, it now it closed. That's what I mean by closed. In one week, a candle closes. So if a candle wicks up all the way to 1,900 and comes back down again, that's what it's called the thinness of the candle is a wick. So if you look at a candle, you light a candle because the power's gone out, you've got a little wick at the top of the candle. And then you've got a normal candle, which is the thickness of the wax. Yeah. So the 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 wick is the top of that. It doesn't. It can be a really large wick, like over here. You can see huge, huge wick over here, big wick over there. So, uh, what that means, the thick, the thinness is. It's not a very strong position, but it did reach that price point. So if you were quick enough in that seven days, you could have sold for a lot more um, if you were holding some alluvium at that time, for example. So the, the thinness of the candle just means it's a wick. It didn't close at the end of your week. So if you're looking at a weekly time frame, you wouldn't say, oh, the, this is the, the point I start taking my Fibonacci. So for example, I, I would take the, the wick of the tallest candle. So these candles are pretty much the same. So I would take the wick of that candle if I was going to draw a Fibonacci. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't take the wick of a, another candle. For example, if I get rid of the replay, replay, Cancel. Um, so, how do I come back out of this? So, I was looking for the exit. So, this is your exit bar of the replay. So, yeah, very handy to see what's going on um, and for back testing. So, if you're uh, trying to draw a Fibonacci and you, you want to learn, you can pretend you're back in 19, uh, sorry, 2000 and whatever, mm. and then draw the chart and then press play and see if you were able to chart correctly and tell where the price point goes from there. So yeah, very handy. So um, by how you're explaining the weekly, okay, so is it by the same logic it works for with monthly and even daily? So the way I'm understanding it right now is that say as example, uh we have a day where the illuvium when it starts at fifty dollars, but then it went up hundred fifty, but by yep. the end of the day it closes to hundred. Yep. Okay, so is it the week it? peaks at 150, but then yeah. when I meant by the thickness, that's where it, it topped at that $100? Correct. It, it went up to 150, comes back down. So your thickness will be at 100. Okay. And then your wick will be the one that goes to 150 and comes back down like this. 
huge ah, yeah. okay yeah and so, then my understanding from the bottom mm -hmm. for the blue one is that it actually starts from the start of the price of the day from the previous day itself in the closing yes and then the bottom is where that is the furthest drop it went down but it went back up again correct uh, so if we zoom into this area here and then you can see okay so the price moved around a lot but it opened and closed in that small zone there ah. in that week so it, it only went down a little bit but yes it wicked down so it's it's showing a nice downtrend um but it wasn't strong like this is a nice this is a nice strong candle yep. this is a nice strong candle um so in this there's different patterns. They call it a DBD, so drop, base, drop. Mm. Uh, so there's all these little terminologies and things like that that, uh, yeah, quite handy. So it's this sort of pattern, drop, base, drop. So like that, that's a drop, base, drop pattern. Uh, so that, that means you, you're going to continue in a downtrend, basically. If you see something like that, then you know, yep, guess what's going to happen? And sure enough, it did. It started to go down, continue. Yeah. Because you saw that pattern. So it's it's quite handy. Quite handy to know those little things. It does it doesn't have to be too complicated. Um, you know, like wick off and things like that. You've really got to study mm -hmm. it to be able to draw up a chart, analyze it and go, right. This is wick off. So My I like simple assumption is that the red color will work the same way, but it's the opposite side, right? Yes, so red color just means um, it was a, 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 a downtrending candle. Yep. And the blue means price started low, and at the end of that week, because we're in the weekly, it finished high. So that's a, a up candle. Okay. Yes. So usually, uh, what would be more important to consider the week itself or the 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 truth like the real thickness of the candle bar itself the thickness of the candle the thickness of the candle so if you're going to draw uh fibonacci it would be uh even though this here is the highest wick um yep. for example this one here is a, a nice high wick that's not where you would start your uh, Fibonacci because you can see here, if I move this around, yes. So we're just lucky in this case that this candle is actually the highest week that we could take our Fibonacci from. Yep. Normally, if you see a really tall week, that doesn't mean that's going to be where you're taking your uh, your marking from. So these two, you would you would take it from the tallest wick of your tallest candle, but both these are the same height. So in this case, this is when you need to start playing with your Fibonacci to see whether uh, which of these you would take. Would you take it from here? The top of that fibs all the way down to your lowest low. Okay. And then you see whether this is the the area that is working well, or if this is the area that is working well. But so usually where, where where should I be drawing it? From the week itself or from the bar? From the week of the highest candle. So oh. if, these, if these two here, if this red and this blue were not the same height, if they were different, then you would take the higher candle and the wick of that. Doesn't matter if it's the tallest wick. It doesn't matter if the wick was only here. If this candle is higher, you take this lower wick. So you would draw it from here like that. Okay. But because they're pretty much exactly the same, I would go with this one because I can see, I can see this much into the, the chart. I can see that this is a good zone. You can see, look, 
it's gone past this area, it's sat down here, it's come back down again. So this is a, a, a good starting point. Um, and this is good to draw your zones. Mm. Straight away, I'd start drawing my zones here and I'd be looking for price to come back into these areas in time. But it's also like you said the other day, um, it, it, price may never get back to these, you know, two thousands. It depends what's happening with the tokenomics of the project as well. So you've got to put that into perspective. You can't just look at the chart and go, "Hey, it's been at two thousand. It's going to come back to two thousand." You're spot on with that analysis. You've got to also look at, uh, you know, what they're doing and where it's it's going to go so yeah this is what we spoke about last week drawing these green lines today we'll talk about how to put them in your favorites bar as well so this is a strong zone your 786 886 zones they're very very strong zones um let's see if i was showing this one yeah So after we've drawn this, now we can go and look at where price is gonna go from here. So it's a long way away. We need something a little bit closer of an analysis to, yep. to start what's happening. So what I would then do is I would draw, um, so we can delete all of this. Get rid of that, get rid of this, right. So let's go back to here and we can start drawing a bit more of a downtrend. Um, so we can draw an uptrend. Let's try a downtrend from here. So you try and zoom in take the wick of the lowest candle here. And price started moving around about here. That's the biggest movement. It just continued to go down. So this will be a good one. So 786, 886, these are areas of strong in the future. This will be areas of strong um, support and resistance. Okay, and then I draw my 50% 618. So you just draw the same zones every time. So you know, and then we'll say this is also our weekly. So we can move all of this into the weekly. So I can very quickly uh, hide and show uh, my weekly. I would spend more time, I'd go in and type in the text box weekly. And even these as well, once things get messy, it's nice to be able to know which ones are weekly, which ones are four hourly and so on. Um, so just coming, stepping back a bit, right, with my question. Yeah. Um, how do I know what is the reasonable time frame to draw the chart from? Okay, uh, because earlier we were looking right from the top, right? So that would be like more than a year of time window before. And but now we are looking at coming from within the last year, April 2022, like mm -hmm. that's much narrower. So how do we determine? Like, is it like is there like a perfect time frame, three months, six months, or a year? It depends where we are right now. So this chart has never been this low. So what we need to do is start to look anywhere in the chart. Uh, you know, three years, uh, if the project's been around that long, two years, three months, wherever that you can find your previous ranges. Yeah. So if the previous range was five years ago, you need to go back five years. Because if you look at, for example, uh, Bitcoin. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so BTC, USD. 
So I've drawn a lot here. Um, if if the the price when when the price came down here, I had to look all the way back to you know twenty twenty one. This Fibonacci in this area to see what's happening with price over here. But when prices were up in this zone, I I can ignore all that stuff from way back and look closer in just until uh, you know more recently in that time. So it all depends where we are. Yeah. So right now the the relevant prices are from twenty fifth October twenty twenty one to 28th November, 2022. So that time period is what's gonna help me trade in this zone right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, so if price comes up to uh, past our previous all-time highs, then I need to uh, just look at the next uh, part of uh, Fibonacci. So, but if you've got previous prices, and we haven't reached that price yet, then we only need to look at the past. They always say, look left and trade right. So you look left and then you continue to trade. So in answer to your question, how far back do you need to go? It really depends on how low or high the price is. So for example, if Bitcoin drops below the $15,000 mark, then we'll have to look even further back here. To, and that's how I drew these Fibonacci's. I was looking around here in 2017, 2018 to draw my fibs. Otherwise, there's, there's, uh, no, if there's no history, like in Illuvium, um, if I can go back to Illuvium. Well, maybe I can you look at Tau? Like, we know that is very new. Yeah. So like I, I don't know like how much of a history or analysis you can do from that. For sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's very new. So it's never been up here before. So we can't really uh, tell what's happening. So we can do a um. So okay, before we go any further, let's uh, talk about creating your Fibonacci. Yeah. So to yep. get your brush tool in this bar, I go across to here. And I find the brush tool. If I want to add or remove the Fibonacci, I just click the triangle. Fib channel. Boom. Can you see it just appeared here, the next Fib channel. Click it away. It's gone away from my favorites bar. So all of these are just handy things to have. I've got Fib retracement, uh, trend-based Fib extension. So it's just going to say, what would happen if price did go up? That's when you use the uh, trend-based fibs. And you can just drag it around like this so it's not in the way, depending on where your chart is. I also added a little watermark so I, I, can, I know uh, what chart I'm looking at. Another very handy thing is this little uh, take a snapshot icon. Avoid copying the image or downloading the image. It can be very bad quality. Uh, what I normally do is I copy the link. So if I copy the link and I paste it, you can click on the link and you get a very crisp, clear picture rather than a degraded screenshot. So this is a very handy one. Um, cool. Uh, now we've spoken about how to add these in. I like adding my Fibonacci retracements, horizontal ray, and I use this rectangle a lot. Uh, this one is also handy for pointing out stuff like this. I forgot about this one, actually. Draws a nice circle. So, hey, guys, this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, uptrend. Yes, this will work. So, we'll go from here. The wick of the tallest candle. Let's go from here. And the lowest low. These are both the same height, so we'll just go with that. Yeah, that looks good. So what happened here? So we're on a downtrend. So downtrend is red. So this line needs to be a red line. So up here is the color choice tool. Say red. 
Uh, and what Mark likes to do is he likes to set up uh, templates. So you can say up, daily up, weekly. So it'll add text and everything for you and change the color. Or you can apply defaults or you can save as. And this is mm -hmm. very handy. So you can save time. And I need another horizontal array. So I mark up my 786-886. And that's a downtrend for weekly. And then I have a red box for the 50% 618 zone. Change that to red. Filler is red. Cool. I'll group these together in my weekly. Uh, create a group of drawings. You can either double click it or just right click and rename. Weekly, downtrend. And like I was showing you before, you double click it and just type in weekly here. Uh -huh. Change the text color. I just find this very handy so you can immediately tell what's happening. Be white. It's good. Okay. Weekly. Right. So nice and easy to see. We've got all of this here. If I don't want that in there, click the show hide little eye icon. Done. Nice and neat. So this is where we can see, and this we know this is good because we can see right here that it's exactly what we spoke about. We've drawn this zone and we can see it's a good zone because the 786, 886 zone, the price it just went a little bit over. Like it's not a guarantee that's where price is gonna come back to, but it's gone a little bit over the 786, 886 zone, pulled back in and then gone skyrocketing up. So this is a good downtrend to say, right, this area has now been changed into an area of support. So price here, should play around, could do anything, could come back down to here before it starts going up again. Or if it passes this zone, it could then continue to come down into our, our red zone. So all I would do is then grab my arrow tool and drag this across to here. And I can say, right, price is going to come down to this zone and then continue up again. So there's not enough uh, data here for us to draw a uptrend. Let's see. Delete this one. Let's try. We'll hide our weekly downtrend. So the importance of Fibonacci is, yeah, it's not gonna work. We, we, we don't have a, a retracement, the top of the tall yeah. It's gotta come down to the 382. So it's not gonna work. Even if we bring this up, so 382 is the important zone. You, anyone can just draw a fibs and go, hey, this is what's going to happen, but it's not an accurate fibs if you haven't had a healthy chart where it mm. comes back, pulls back to a 382. Even if we move this and go, look, actually, maybe it was important for price to be taking it from here. Maybe this is where we start here. Almost, almost reaching the 382, but not yet. So we need really need to wait. Even if it wicks into it, you can say, oh, that that's a it's a start of Fibonacci and then you can start drawing your lines. Okay, this this is a good Fibonacci. Let's go back to a red line here. Uh, sorry, this is going to be green now because we're in an uptrend uh, template. It's not daily though. Call this weekly. Okay, and this one is also weekly. So you can see it changes the color for me and puts the word. So template can come in handy. Uh, thanks to Mark for that one. Um, but we can't draw that right now. Yeah, so we'll just delete that one, delete this one. We can't call it uh, Phoebs just yet. So we keep an eye on it.
you can leave it there and you can say tentative fibs. So you can just rename this, uh, rename. So you can say uh, not yet or tentative. So that you know that it's a tentative weekly fibs. Oh. So it's not just fibs, 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 rectangle, rectangle, rectangle. Um, you can actually rename them. But even looking at the time frame itself, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, with the candlesticks too, is it more important to look at the weekly, monthly, or the daily chart? Very good question. So, uh, the always zoom out, look at the big picture. For example, what does that mean? Uh, if I go to uh, the 15 minute time frame, like if you look at uh, CoinGecko, Sometimes it shows you a 15 minute and you look at it and say, oh, like, look at all this movement. Uh, everything is looking too complicated. 15 minutes is not accurate. Um, some people are good at trading in, in the 15 minute area, but the best way to tell is start drawing some fibs. So draw a fibs from the highest high to the lowest low in the 15 minute. It, and it also depends on how often you're going to be uh, trading this. This looks good. This a couple of things happen in this zone here. So you can start drawing fibs here and seeing if it works. Mm -hmm. If if there's no correlation, then your your fibs is not going to work on a lower time frame. There's too much noise. So people are just buying, selling too much noise. The most accurate is when you zoom out to four hour this is when things really start taking shape and Fibonacci really works well because people have made up their minds, done what they need to do, gone through the emotions. And then that's where Fibs comes in. So uh, I would always start. And my mentor always said this as well, start on the weekly, sometimes four day, three day works well, play around with that particular uh, uh, chart that you're looking at, whether it's uh, Bitcoin, Tau, alluvium, whatever it is, find out what chart works so that you can start using your fibs nicely uh, and then start buying or selling or trading, whatever you're going to do with it. Okay. Um, so the most important is for long-term holders, you want to zoom out. When you're about to buy today or tomorrow, then you want to zoom in a little bit, maybe four day or four hour but you, you wouldn't really worry too much about the one minute or the 15 minute unless you're doing um, those trades like options trading um, where that one minute, three minute trade become more important. So usually what type of trading that you have found that is most effective? Like is it day trading, weekly trading or more of a long, long term hold? Uh, I have found it's different for different people that, that whatever whatever you like is what has been the most beneficial for them. So my mentor, uh, she loves one minute trading. Yep. She'll go into the one minute zone and she'll buy and it'll just go up uh, like crazy for her with fibs. She loves the 786, 886 zones and she'll do very well. But then somebody else, they'll be like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm only doing... Uh, long-term holds there's too much movement in there that's it's too much stress so it, it's hard to give you an answer and say everybody does well in long-term holds uh, for me is that i would much prefer having a long-term hold okay mm. because as, uh, as you know already i am a huge believer in the four-year cycle that goes around with bitcoin exactly. okay and so i like to do dollar cost average during the winter and then I do dollar cost average when I'm selling out. Mm -hmm. Okay, during the bull run. Uh, but my problem times, I still do find that there are coins that I really, really like. Mm -hmm. So I do dollar cost average in it. But especially all coins is may not always be ideal because I heard of the terms, you are catching a falling knife. Okay, mm -hmm. so it is not a nice feeling like Oh, like looking at Illuvium, okay, that was the best example. Okay, I really, really like the project, okay. Uh, and I thought that when it dropped like 
75%, 80%. I thought that that's a really cheap price to get in. Okay. So I got, I started betting in when it was like $500. Okay. But from last year. So I, I'll put like a few hundreds every month, few hundred, few hundred, few hundreds. But it kept on dropping and dropping and dropping. So mm -hmm. I don't know, is it a much better way for me if I can learn to look at a chart and be patient and just to collect the money? Because you can imagine that it might be better off, like instead of me putting like a few hundreds every month, I could have waited and determined, okay, this is probably the best time to jump in. And that's when I put all my lump sum in. Yes. Uh, yeah. Look, be, be careful with lump sums though. Sorry, continue. Yep. I would think maybe more like a nice balance of strategy, uh, strategy there. Yeah. Um, maybe uh, if it's dropped this level, then I say okay, I'll put uh twenty percent of my holding. Then if it drops yeah. further, then I put another twenty percent. So determine the price points, okay? So yeah. I figured like instead of like oh determined by the time frame, like I'm putting money every month, I would say oh if we reach this a uh, certain price point, that's when I put money in. So could be a better strategy. <laughs> it is it is i i have too many i mean <clears throat> i've made this uh lesson as well i don't like calling it a mistake because i've learned from it yeah. um so it's a lesson where the same thing happened uh, the price was going down price was going down oh i'll buy a little bit uh, but i bought too much i should have kept a bit more i should have done like what you were right. saying 10 percent, 20 percent, and then it continued to go down doesn't matter i've got nine more opportunities to dollar cost average DCA in at those prices. So yes, definitely worthwhile. It's helped Rosh a lot. Um, he gave you the Tesla example and he told his work colleague, hang on a second, hang on a second. Let me just quickly draw the chart. And I only gave him a 20 minute session. So you don't need a huge understanding of this. You can just see that the pattern works. Okay, I'm in the right time frame. Okay, maybe, maybe I'm on the wrong um, uh, chart. Maybe I shouldn't use uh, this particular exchange for the chart. That can also make a difference too. If you look at different exchanges for Bitcoin, there's so many different ones. There's BitMEX, there's Binance, there's Bitstamp. Go and see which one works best or has the cleanest candles and then use that chart. Um, any more questions for today? Otherwise, I'll need to wrap I it think, up, and then I we think can... we wrap up pretty quickly. Yeah, you know, it, it especially me needing what to better improve on my investments, because one thing I find is that yeah, it, it, yes, while I might have bought it cheap, right? When I still catching the falling knife, it's like I could have accumulated more if it drops. <laughs> oh, like when it's like it's so cheap, right? Yep. I've run out of capital. That's the problem. <laughs> it's it's always the problem. It's like when this is the whole premise of this. When do I buy? When do I sell? Yeah. So if you have just a basic uh, chart understanding, even what we've spoken about today, now it's just about practice. Yeah. Okay, set up your thing. Um, what's the the numbers on your Fibonacci? Yeah. So. You know, we go through and, and fill in, right? It's uh, 382, 786, 886, 50%, 618. Draw those lines. I like having the same color pattern as my mentor. If you like having the same color pattern, go for it. Um, and that, that then whatever helps you. Um, somebody else like Mark, he may not like that colors or he wants a, a thicker background. Because if you go in and open up your trading view account now and draw your Fibonacci, it won't look the same as mine. The default is very messy, uh, a, a very um, almost opaque background. So you can't see what's happening in the background, uh, in the foreground, because the background is so thick. So I yeah. turn off the background completely, just have nice thick lines, clear colors. I know where to draw my lines. Okay. Okay. So we, we can practice that together. Um, if you like. Yeah, so I think that I could start practicing looking at the charts uh, throughout the week. Yes. And I can come back the next time and let you know how it goes. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that is definitely the fastest way. And you'll find out straight away, oh, I'm stuck at the first step. How do I get this toolbar? Um, which Fibonacci are we using? So in here, it's just Fib retracement. 
and then you go into the settings. So once you draw the fib, then you get a little settings bar up here. And then you go into here, use these settings. So when you watch the video, you can screenshot this and use these settings. Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. All right.